Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zahra Bayani, and I'm here with Senator Penny Wong. Welcome to the Global Peace Conference. Uh, Senator Penny Wong was born in Malaysia. As an eight years old, she moved to Australia with her family and settled in Adelaide. Penny was selected to the Australian Senate in 2001, a Minister of Climate Change and Water, Minister for Finance and Deregulation, and leader of the government in the Senate. She's the current leader for the opposition in the Senate, as well as the Shadow Minister for Foreign Affairs. Penny lives in Adelaide with her parents and their two daughters. Good afternoon, Honorable Penny Wong. I'm very privileged to be interviewing you today and thank you for being an advocate for diversity, peace, inclusion, and multiculturalism. My oh. people love your leadership and vision for the current and future of this beautiful country. And I'm very lucky to be living in Australia, the land, the land of opportunities. This conference is about peace and peacemaking. So I would like to ask you some question about how politics and peace in the city. Uh, Zara, thank you for that very kind introduction. And it's fantastic to be here uh, uh, virtually uh, for the Global <laughs> Peace Conference. Uh, and uh, I, I should introduce you because um, uh, you have uh, such a wonderful story as well to share with conference participants. Um, I'm being interviewed by or with Zara Bayani, who is originally from Afghanistan. Um, we have uh, um, a number of, um, we have quite a large Zara community here in Adelaide. Um, okay. Zara lives in Adelaide, as do I, so that's nice, um, and uh -huh. has had a pretty uh, extraordinary academic career since she arrived in Australia. Uh, only a few years ago, January 2017, with no grasp of English, which is very, very <laughs> impressive. Um, uh, she's graduated from one of our colleges here, Thebden Senior College. Uh, she's received a number of student awards and leadership awards, and she's currently studying at one of our universities, the University of South Australia. Uh, and she brings, I think, um, to this discussion, a perspective of somebody who knows what it is to leave a war-torn country as a refugee yeah. and to come to a new land, uh, which and to bring the values and experiences that she has to this discussion. So it's a privilege to yeah. talk with you. Yeah. Thank you for a nice introduction. So as I said, this conference is uh, about peace and peacemaking. So I would like to ask you some question about how politics and peace intersect. So the first question is, what opportunities do the events of the last year provide us with respect to creating a more equitable and just future? Mm. Well, what are, let's first pause to recognise what we're experiencing and what we're coming through. Uh, it is the worst yeah. pandemic uh, in uh, a century for humanity, uh, and it'll be it's the largest economic downturn since the Great Depression. Uh, yeah. And I think it reminds us of a few things. Um, uh, first, it reminds us that we are all in this together. Yes. Uh, human beings across the world face similar challenges, similar griefs, similar tragedies, uh, similar um, uh, uh, difficulties um, in, yeah. in terms of the pandemic and its economic and public health consequences. And I think, you know, we, we, we know that from the way in which the world has shared grief around people we have lost, people who have been lost. Uh, whilst we've been very lucky in Australia, we've certainly, we're not immune. Uh, I think it's also reminded us that it, those who are uh, least resilient, those who are have least, are the hardest hit. So yes. you are, uh, you know, a person in Adelaide with a, a reasonable income and shelter, uh, your experience of this sort of global downturn and a global pandemic, you, you have a lot more resilience uh, to to it than than somebody who's a you know, someone who lives in the, the, the slums of Rio de Janeiro or uh, in, the, in in Africa, in one of the African countries, which is um, yeah. which battling the pandemic. So I think for me, it reminds us some of the, you know, those truisms, which is we are all in this together and we are stronger together. Uh, and that we uh, have an opportunity and an obligation to respond to these sorts of collective challenges collectively. Now, 
we haven't done as well, I think, as a globe as we could and as we should, and that's, I think, been to the detriment of, of humanity. But it is a yeah. reminder of truth. That is, uh, there are some things that, that we have to come together to resolve and we have to come together to find solutions. What, what do you think it's shown us, Sarah, this last year? What is your experience <laughs> as, a, as a young Hazara woman in Adelaide observing? Yeah, I think the same. I think country. that it brought, yeah, I think it brought uh, people together and all the communities came together. It made us think that plan and prepare for future. Mm -hmm. And events did affect everyone. So our Afghan community donated lots of funds and landed a hand to those affected. And it connected people together. And still I think so many people are suffering this year due to pandemic. And it allows people to see each as human being, not of certain color of region religion. So everyone has been affected by this pandemic. So I That's think that we are all in this yeah, in this together and we have the responsibility to lend a hand to those in need in this kind of situation. You know? mm. As you said, the less <laughs> resilient one. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just thinking it's a it's a really good point, isn't it, that it's a reminder that you know, your culture, your ethnicity, your yeah. race, your faith. Yeah. Uh, you don't, they're not, in many ways, they're not relevant to the experience, the common experience. And, you know, I think that is a good thing to remember that yeah. diversity is, yeah, is well, something to be celebrated, but, um, you know, we're, we're, instead of people thinking that there's some division because of those characteristics, it's a reminder of our yeah. common humanity. Mm. Yes, that we're all human. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, we go to the next question, which is, uh, if you were to envision a more peaceful world, what do you look like? Yes. Well, uh, let's work. I hope we could be, have built on some of what we have learned. Uh, I mean, this is the, it's been 75 years since the UN Charter was enacted. Um, yeah, uh, and we came together. The world came together in the aftermath of uh, you know, appalling loss of life and destruction, the scourge yeah. of war. We recognise the the sorrow that that brought to humanity, um, and we came together to affirm principles around human rights and justice. Um, you know, internet, the rule of international law. Uh, and we did it actually not just, um, I think it's important for us to remember, it, we, we, the nations of the world did that because we didn't want the same mistakes to be repeated. Yes. So if I'm looking forward 50 years, I suppose what I would say is I hope we can learn from some of those mistakes and the mistakes since, including the mistakes yeah. of this time, and, and have a world where we have an international system of cooperation. Um, yeah. We, we, we call it multilateralism, but fundamentally it means international cooperation, uh, yeah. which enable us to respond to um, those common threats and challenges, uh, yeah. whether they're pandemics or climate change, uh, and enable us also to work to lift uh, all of humanity yeah. out of poverty. Um, yes. I think it's quite one of the fears I have as a consequence of the pandemic is that nationalism is really on the rise uh, yeah. and I think we, we have a very strong examples historically of what happens to humankind when nationalism comes to the fore. Yeah. Well, so, but I'm not going to be around in 50 years so I was you probably will be. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure you will be. <laughs> no, 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 I'll be 100 then, and I don't reckon that's going to work. <laughs> but you, you tell me. <laughs> Do you think forward? So, how old are you now? I'm 23, but okay. I just started my uni. So, it means that I start my year 12 here again. So, it means that I'm a bit older than my the rest of the colleagues in my class. Classmates. It's all right, you've had a lot of other experiences, it's fine. But okay, so <laughs> 
by the time hopefully let's say you might be a grandparent um what sort of world do you want to see your grandchildren in um, yeah that i hope that we can continue to work together towards bringing everyone together and i hope we can learn from wrongdoings of the past and we can make a world where everyone is living in a harmony free of discrimination and harassment and in peace peaceful world and at the moment i can travel for example i hope that in 50 years people can travel the world freely and for example i couldn't travel in iran because of uh, every state i need a permit and a special document and opportunities another thing that i feel like opportunities should be available for everyone and back in iran i couldn't kind of attend the mainstream school with iranian kids it was separated schools and it was there was huge difference between those schools and i hope that we have a world free of poverty and where that everyone has the opportunity to get education because i believe that through education we can change the world for the better and I mean, all the disadvantages kids to have the opportunities to get education. Because in Australia, we are very lucky to have the best healthcare system and education in the world. But the one thing is that I want everyone in the world to have such healthcare system education that we have in here, in all around the world. No matter where you're living and kind of uh, what your state of well being is, you have to have all the opportunities available for you as a human being. Mm. Yeah. Well, that, that would be a better world, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be, yeah. And the next question is, uh, how much the root of uh, politics and politician change to allow for your vision of a peaceful future? Mm. One of the things, um, I've talked quite a lot about, particularly after what happened in Christchurch, yeah. was how important it is for leaders to reject the politics of racism, um, the politics of division, the politics of intolerance, the politics of prejudice. But I think whether you're a political leader or a community leader or a faith leader, perhaps the single greatest contribution you can make to a peaceful future is by articulating and embodying the values that enable that to happen and to stand against uh, those corrosive beliefs which undermine that possibility. So yeah. we should, you know, we should uh, choose um, unity and not division. We should choose um, acceptance, not prejudice. We should choose love, not hate. And we should embody yeah. that in uh, the words we say and in the way we act and, and in the policies we give effect to. And when we, when we are confronted by um, division and prejudice and hate, I think we have to work with others and stand very firmly against that. Uh, so, yeah. for example, one of the things it was really important for me to uh, work for uh, was um, bipartisan, so in Australia, multi part you know, we have the government and the opposition, the Westminster yeah, yeah, yeah. system, but was, was to make sure that we had clear statements uh, about oh, yeah. racism and prejudice and the importance yeah. of inclusion and acceptance yeah. uh, from both sides of politics. Uh, mm -hmm. That kind of uh, partnership and coalition building, I think, is really important. Um, yeah. So, you know, where we can work with uh, others from different perspectives yeah. for common values, I think that it, yeah. in that space, something very beautiful happens uh, and something yeah, very yeah. powerful. Um, so, and it ha I'm sure you know this in your life. For me, I, I remember being really quite profoundly moved uh, many years ago uh, when we had, um, uh, we have a particular politician in Australia who was then a politician and still is, uh, who you know, yeah. uh, is very anti-Asian and then very anti-Muslim and very anti yeah. um, the rights of our Indigenous people. And one of the things we did was we worked uh, an organisation of which I was a part. We worked with churches, um, we worked with people from 
the Islamic community, we worked with uh, people from the Aboriginal community, uh, we worked with people from the trade unions, so we had and yep. people from community groups, and so we had a very broad coalition of people, many of whom had different beliefs around a range of things, but they were very united in the belief that Australia was a, was better than this, that we were a country that yep. would not and should not discriminate against people because of how they looked or the, which god they worship, and that was yep. really powerful. Um, so I think there are moments where those values do change a country. Uh, and yeah. the expression of those values do change a country. And that, that, you know, it's a privilege when we're part of that and it's a disappointment when we don't aspire, when we don't um, live yeah. up to that. Yeah. And what, what do you, you think so we should do better, Zara? What do you think politicians <laughs> leaders could do better? This is your opportunity. I think politicians are playing a great lead in shaping the country and the leaders and their actions are so vital in bringing people together and what kind of community we will, we will have in the future. Mm. So their vision, action, the leadership are key to creating a better future for the upcoming generation of this beautiful country. So I think they should work with you and hear their voices. So I want the, opportun uh, the politician uh, to work with Australian First Nation people because we are so lucky to have the longest living uh, cultures in the world. And I hope that the next generation are the ones that lead this country peacefully and beneficial for everyone mm. to make this country a best place to live in all around the world. You know? mm. I agree with that. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's a very good final word, Zara. And um, <sighs> wish you and all of your, all of those working with you all the best Cool. not just for the conference, oh, thank you so but for, for the work you will do and are doing to make this a better world. That was really great to see you here and I feel privileged and feel lucky. I wouldn't <laughs> think of some, one day I would interview you, such there a you nice person, kind person. <laughs> uh, it's good to meet you. I hope I, I can see you around Adelaide at some point. Yeah, hopefully, yeah.